Hello everyone, today I have a uh, thankless task of putting in an all-in-one toilet repair kit. This one's from, uh, it says Universal, and it's from Fluid Master. Uh, you can pick it up on Amazon for about 16 bucks, $15. Uh, it's a pretty good deal, really, if you think about all the parts that you're getting here. Uh, but, you know, I'll, I'll break down the kit in a second and show you, you know, what's in it. Uh, basically, my issue was that I had a continuously running uh, toilet. And I had, you know, I had to go in and take a look and see, diagnose where the leak was. And when I found out where the leak was, well, you know, it wasn't just a simple fix. It was basically replace everything. Because... Uh, the amount of work to do just the one thing that needed to be fixed, it wasn't worth it. So, for $15, I'm going to replace everything in the toilet bowl. I'm going to show you how to do it. It says that, uh, you know, everything, all you need to make your toilet run like you we'll see. And uh, it says, easy install. Well, I'm not sure about that, but we'll, uh, I'll assess that after I'm done, I guess. Uh, next, I'll show you the kit and the kind of tools you're going to need in order to do this. Okay, here's all the components that come out of that kit, or came out of that kit. Uh, we have the uh, valve, the, the uh, filler valve, uh, a filler tube, uh, the handle, which is kind of nice, you know, you get a nice handle with it. I'm not sure whether I'm going to use it or not. Um, I may just put it on for this video's sakes. Um, uh, hardware to hold the uh, filler tube to this tube, as I can tell there. Uh, nuts, uh, bolts, and uh, screws, uh, and rubber uh, grommets for all of that, uh, all those fittings, and um, the flapper tube, which is the last thing that uh, the actual thing that actually broke on me. Uh, please note that there is a remove card here on that flapper, so make sure you remove that prior to even starting the installation. I just do it right now. Um, and uh, basically all that hardware. Now, you're gonna need, you know, you can hand tighten most of this stuff. Uh, you could use a, a set of channel locks on, on something this large if you wanted to, um, or an adjustable wrench if you have a big enough one. And uh, we'll go from there. And I will follow the instructions uh, to the best of my ability for you and install this stuff in the toilet. These are all the tools you're going to need to complete this job, or at least all the tools I needed. Um, you're going to need a, <clears throat> sorry, a hacksaw, uh, tape measure, a pair of wire cutters, uh, half inch uh, wrench, box is preferred uh, if you have it, a uh, set of channel locks, these are two inch uh, at the longest I believe, yeah, two inch or so uh, channel locks. Uh, just so you know, these just barely did it, so if you have a larger set, that would probably be better. Uh, a flat head screwdriver or standard screwdriver, and uh, that's it. You have all these tools, uh, you'll be able to do this job without any issue whatsoever. Uh, just so you know, this my only issue with any of these tools was this channel lock was just barely big enough to do it. Okay, But it did do it. Alright, first indication that I had a problem was right here. Uh, you see the water in the bowl, and the water in the bowl kept having ripples in it. And five minutes after I flushed the toilet, it would continue to have a ripple in it. You could see the water had waves in it all the time. There were little ripples from the edges. Uh, you can use a flashlight or just normal light if you have good enough light, and you'll see it. Uh, you shouldn't have any ripples in that water whatsoever. It should be totally uh, calm uh, and, 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 and flat, okay? Uh, if there's wind outside, you might have a little bit of up and down on the uh, actual level of the water, but uh, you shouldn't have ripples coming on any of the edges of that uh, standing water, clean water in your uh, toilet, okay? So that's the first, you know, that's an indication that you have a leak if you have ripples in there. Um, you may also hear it, uh, you know, running all the time or filling all the time. Uh, that's another indication that you have some sort of malfunction in your toilet. Okay, first thing you need to do is turn the water off to the toilet. Uh, you'll see a fill hose in most of these. Maybe you'll have a rod, but most of them have hoses. And you'll see a valve at the very bottom of that hose. Just turn it clockwise, uh, like so, until you get it all the way uh, turned clockwise and it stops. Now don't overturn it, don't break it, just be, you know, just snuggle do. And that, that'll turn the water off to the toilet. 
Uh, next thing you should do is flush it and empty the bowl, the uh, the tank. Okay, but. Uh, if you don't have one of these little shutoff valves, then you're going to have to shut off the main and depressurize your, your system. Uh, in other words, you're going to have to turn off the water to your house or to turn off the water to this feed somewhere and uh, then depressurize it. Okay, and, and best way to do that is, again, flush it uh, and then open up your taps and let the water drain. Okay, but that's outside of the scope of this. Uh, I'm assuming you have one of these to shut off the water going to the tank. Okay, the next thing you need to do is remove the ceramic top on the top of the tank and it's pretty easy, it just lifts off, you pick it up. Be careful with it, it's fragile, you drop it, you'll break it, you'll crack it. So just put it down somewhere there where it's safe and it won't fall. And then you see the innards of your, of your uh, working toilet, okay? Well, here's the, the various parts and how they work. Uh, on this toilet we have a float valve right here. What happens when it fills up is that this lifts up and then actuates the, the lock, the uh, float valve over here. Now if this valve is going on you then when it gets to the top it'll just continue to fill and fill and fill and eventually what will happen uh, is it'll fill to the top of this pipe here which I've lost obviously um, It'll, it'll fill the water level to the top of this pipe, okay, and then it'll just spill into the toilet. Uh, this feeds into the toilet as well as that uh, flapper down here, that, okay, but I'll put this here. That's, that's where the drain hole hose into the toilet when it's filling and, and water's going into it. That's where it comes through right there. But if the valve is gone, this will raise up to here and the water level will keep going and going and then fall into there and down into the toilet. And that's a safety feature. It keeps the toilet from overflowing, uh, the toilet tank from overflowing, that is. Okay, the other place where you, you can get a leak is right here, the flapper valve. If it's got uh, some sort of corrosion or something on it or some sort of gunk buildup in it, then, you know, it'll leak. Uh, the way to check that is just open it up, clean off the mouth, as you can see down there. I don't know if you can see it right down there. And then put it back down and see if it actually leaks anymore. Those are fairly cheap and easy to replace, okay? So if you have a leak in the flapper valve, just replace the flapper. It's no big deal. Uh, it comes off fairly easy, and I'll show you that next. Uh, where my leak was, was at the base of this tube. This is the filler tube for the bowl. Uh, it rinses the bowl as, as the tank is filling up. And it was broken right at the bottom, okay? And that was causing water to leak through that tube. So the water level would ra rise to here and then leak through that crack at the bottom into the tank continuously. Well, that's a lot of money, a lot of water going down the toilet, literally. So, uh, since the plastic has been compromised on this, and probably because it's just old and had its day, uh, I figured all the other plastic on it was the same age as it was installed on the same day. So I'm replacing all the guts here. Uh, I have a toilet handle here. I'm going to replace it as well. Uh, what the heck, uh, we're at it. Might as, I got a new one anyway, so might as well do it. Uh, all this stuff is coming off, okay? And uh, the toilet bowl is going to have to, actually the tank itself is going to have to be removed for this flapper uh, mouth here to be replaced as well. Okay, so um, I'll show you how all that goes uh, step by step. Okay, first step, I'm going to remove the easy stuff. I'm going to get rid of the stuff that's in the way here. This is just uh, some sort of cleaner unit. Um, you just put some solvent or something in here and it flushes into the toilet. So you probably, most people won't even have that. But it's the pipe that comes from uh, the filler into the uh, tank bowl. Toilet bowl, sorry. Uh, as we know, our pipe is broken here, it broke off, so no biggie there. Uh, so let's get rid of the tank handle next. And you see that there's a little, um, almost like a nut here. And I'm just going to try and get that off of there, see how it goes. I'm assuming it screws off, but that's an assumption. It looks like I'm making a bad one. Okay, I just tried using my channel locks on that uh, to spin that little nut off. Um, I was actually going the wrong way. 
uh, actually counterclockwise doesn't take it off. Clockwise takes it off. It's the exact reverse of a normal nut. So I'm just, that's why when I tried to take it off with my hand, it wouldn't come off either. So I'm just going to loosen it up there. And there we go. Unfortunately, this is the rare exception where uh, lefty is not loosey. <laughs> okay, so as you can see now, the nut is off and the handles drop down. Okay, so next. Just move the nut down like that. And uh, just remove the wire from the flapper. And I noticed, note where it's hooked up here, it's, no, it's hooked up on the last hole, but you can adjust that on the, on the next handle. All right, next, um, I'm gonna remove this valve. And as you can see, there's still water in the bottom of the tank. So uh, there'll probably be some water in the pipe too for this as well. You may wanna get a couple of towels. I'm gonna use a towel to uh, uh, soak up that water and uh, then uh, go from there. All right, there's the bowl nice and dry. I used the rag just to soak up the water on the bottom until it was all drained. Uh, and now we can go ahead and take this off. Now, you'll notice that it goes through the tank at the bottom uh, left-hand side here. So we need to remove the hardware from that side. So we're gonna get, uh, uh, we're gonna get to the uh, fill pipe and uh, the flex hose to this uh, first thing. Okay, there's the bottom left-hand side of the tank. And as you can see, there's a couple of fittings there. There's a fitting to hold a three-quarter inch uh, feed pipe onto it. And uh, it looks like it's hand tightened. You could just probably use a, uh, your hand to take it off. Or if, you, if it's too tight, you can use a pair of, uh, your pair of channel locks or pliers or something like that to get it off. But remember, it's plastic, so it's probably not on there too tight, number one. Number two, you don't want to break it. So unscrew it, and there'll be a little bit of water from this pipe. So. Get your rag underneath it just to, you know, minimize the mess. And so counterclockwise, this one comes off counterclockwise. And there's a little bit of water I was talking about. And uh, so just get it out of the way as much as possible. Okay, that's step one. And step two is to take this nut off of here. Now that is not hand tight. That is, you know, tool tight. So I'm going to use a pair of uh, uh, adjustable, an adjustable wrench maybe, or my channel locks. I don't think my adjustable wrench opens up that big. So I'll just use my channel locks, which are these tools, uh, basically variable pliers. And just turn it counterclockwise. Try not to break anything. There we go. Okay, so we're just taking this nut off. Well, at a certain point it becomes easy enough that you can turn it with your hand. Okay. And keep that because you're going to need it to put it back, uh, put the new valve assembly in. It doesn't come with one, I don't believe. So make sure you keep it, make sure you don't break it. Um, so next, uh, just pull this uh, valve assembly, up. just push it up through and into the tank and take it out of the tank. So there it is. Just pull it out and uh, keep it around for a while, anyway, for now. Next, we've got to take the uh, flapper valve up. Um, so if you were just replacing the flapper valve, the easiest way to do that is pull the, the uh, little hinges off the edges like that and off it comes. Okay, I'm replacing it, but if you were just replacing that because it was leaking or it was broken somehow, uh, usually, you know, that's it. That's all it takes to do that. Pretty easy. Turn the water off, pull that off, and you're back in business, put the new one on. But, as you can see, this unit is bolted, or, or screwed, well I say, yeah, bolted right into the bottom of the bowl. So it has, you have to take the bowl off to get this off. So there's two screws, one there, 
and one there. And they're both flathead screws. Uh, they should, yeah, you can reach them, reach the nuts on the other side of those uh, bolts or screws uh, on the other side. So you're going to need a flathead screwdriver and something to hold on to the bolt on the other side. So uh, basically I'm going to uh, do that next. Okay, so I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver and probably because this thing's mounted with rubber bushings, it's not going to be all that tight. You'll be able to hold a bolt from underneath with just your bare hand underneath the, the tank. Okay, so let's get at it. Okay, I got my finger on the bolt on the, on the nut underneath. One bolt and do yourself a favor, always put the nut in the washer back the way you found it on the part. That way you know, you know, what belongs to what if you ever need it again. There's nothing wrong with that. It could be used again. Get over here. And we're going to do the same with this other bolt on the bottom. There we are. Now, remember, once you take this other bolt off, there's nothing holding on the tank. So, careful not to drop the tank. Because it could drop quite easily. Sorry, I can't. I don't know if you can see that, but unfortunately, my hand's going to be in the way. So again, lefty loosey, right tighty. Yeah, that bolt on the bottom of this one is not coming off so easy. So I'm going to have to put a, a wrench on it. Fortunately, we have the other nut uh, off the uh, tank, so we don't have to guess at the size. It's a half inch on mine. Um, you know, use the appropriate size uh, box wrench if you have it. If not, use an adjustable if you can get it in there to hold it, or even a pair of pliers, you know, uh, as long as you can hold it uh, while you're turning the screw. Have the wrench on the bottom. Remember, once this bolt is off, or once the nut is off this bolt, this tank is no longer secured to anything, so it can easily be dropped. You drop it, you break it, you're buying a new one. Okay, so very careful once you get that nut off of there and that bolt. Remember, tank is now not secured. So, next thing we're going to do is lift that tank out of there and uh, take this unit off. Also going to clean up a little bit of the dirt on the bottom there too. Alright, next step, just lift off the bolt. Very careful with that bolt, it'll break easy. All right, there's the toilet tank uh, removed from the toilet. I got it upside down because the nut is actually on the bottom. So uh, we have the seal here, so we got to remove the seal. You can use your screwdriver if you want to pry that up or just take your hand and do it. Just lift it up, there we go. There's the seal off of that. It's plastic or rubber seal. Take it out of the way. So, Again, my channel locks come in handy. Hopefully they're big enough for that. And they look like they're just about big enough. Man. Excuse me if I'm in the shot. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be the toughest part of this whole thing. It's not breaking that. million plumbers out there right now saying he's doing it wrong you got the you need the right tool there we go well, at least I know how tight I gotta go with it wow it's really on there maybe I could have turned the top part I don't know but it's still good it's all right so channel locks are, even these I thought would be big enough. Okay, now the whole thing's turning. Again, remember this is porcelain. I'm going to have to grab from the inside and turn on the outside. Well, I'm 
not sure whether you can see it or not, but the person who put this uh, collar on and this ring cross-threaded it, making it really hard for me to take off. But it doesn't matter because I have another one just in case I break this one or if I decide to break it to take it off. Um, the, uh, the new fixture, exact same size. Yep, exact same size. Before you break anything, make sure you got the right parts. And the, the uh, new ring looks a lot nicer too. Um, you know, so you don't need to worry too much about hurting that, that ring. struggle. Uh, unfortunately mine was cross-threaded. Hopefully yours won't be. But uh, let me show you a little trick I used. Uh, if you look, you'll see that inside there's a little slot right there. And what I did to hold this from turning when I had it up, when it was in upside down, as you saw in the video, I used my wrench inside like that and that gave me enough leverage to keep it from turning and then eventually it just freed itself up. Okay, next, I'm going to clean that little hole because uh, clean, clean little, uh, the cleaner the mating surface are, are, are the better. Alright, I wiped those holes all clean because uh, the cleaner the mating surface is, the better the seal is going to be. So you want them to be nice and clean. Uh, I'll flip the tank over show you the inside. You can see the same thing here if I get you the right angle. Uh, all those holes are nice and clean and the next thing to do is to start reassembling it and what I'm going to start with is this which is my, the piece that broke on me right around here it actually broke around the base here but uh, this is the flapper unit so we're going to put it in first okay uh, prior to putting that in there the uh, flapper assembly you'll notice that uh, Mine broke right there, okay, right at the base. Uh, it's actually not a good thing, but uh, you know, that's why I'm replacing it. But um, if you look at the total length of the other overflow tube, you see that it's much longer, okay? So you'll need to cut this over the black overflow tube down to the right size, okay? And the way you determine the right size is by lining the two systems up and then marking it off and cutting it off. Now a hacksaw will do a, a fine job on that. Uh, as you can see on mine, I also have this little inlet cover. Take that off. And then you get a better idea of how, what size it is there. Uh, you know, like I said, you have to have the overflow tube be the same size on both of them. They do, they do give you a larger, longer one on purpose. So I'm going to mark this black tube off here and then cut it off using a hacksaw. Uh, I suggest you use a hacksaw on that. It probably works the best. Okay, there's my overflow pipe uh, cut down to the correct length uh, so that when the water reaches that level, it goes back into the tank. And that's, that's the proper procedure. Uh, once I have that, um, we just take the nut off the bottom here, put it back inside the uh, tank. Okay, one more thing to notice inside the tank for placement. Um, make sure that you don't cover up the holes. You see there's one here for one retaining bolt and one here for the other retaining bolt. Uh, you want to keep that open so that, see if you can see that, yeah, so that you can put easily put your screw into it and put it down. Also, have, you know, mine had it facing this way, but I'm sure you have plenty of pipe to make it go uh, far enough. So, you know, I, I'd put it right around there and that gives the whole float system a lot of room to move, okay? You want to avoid interfering with the float system or those two holes. So I'm laying the tank on the side, holding the overflow here, I'm just putting this nut on. And don't do what the last guy did on me and cross thread it. So just make sure it should turn easily just like that. 
Okay. Check replacement inside. Mine looks good. As you can see, I hope there it is. Uh, so what I have it a little bit off to the towards this end uh, with the filler hole here and the two bolts exposed. So now I'm just going to tighten it down. As I said, don't be like the last guy and do it super tight. Let's do it nice and tight. That'll do. Now there's a rubber seal on the other side that keeps it from moving anyway. And you can see that this is not moving here, the flapper. Okay, and next, just use my channel locks. This one is a, a little smaller nut or the easier nut to turn. So, you know, like I said, it's plastic, don't go crazy on it. Snug is good, that's plenty right there. Don't need to go any hard, harder than that. I can't move with my hand, it's on there really nice and tight. Yeah, no more than that. So about a half turn past tight with your hand. If you go too far, you split it or something will break. Or you'll end up cross-threading it like the last guy did. Either way, that's tight enough. Okay, and uh, the rule of thumb if for the uh, overflow pipe, this one right here, uh, if you don't know what length to cut it or you don't have the original part or something like that, is you need to cut it at least an inch below the handle, the hole in the handle, okay? That'll keep the water from going up above that and spilling out. Okay, so remember, overflow pipe an inch below the hole for the handle, okay, the flush handle. Okay, I noticed that my flapper valve, which is, is basically a floating valve and gravity should make it fall down, it didn't fall down when I flipped it upside down, right? So you get a little poke, it's not falling down. So there's obviously an issue uh, with that. So let me turn it over and show you what that issue is. Just in case it happens to you, make sure you don't do this. My chain is underneath the seal uh, on the bottom of that uh, um, coupling, but don't pull the chain out, you might rip the seal apart. So just unscrew it, take the chain out, make sure it stays out, and then, uh, you know, Put it back together again. Remember all about the placement. All right, so I loosened the nut around the collar there and then uh, removed the chain from the uh, actual uh, coupling or the seal that I had. And now you can see the flapper valve is actually hanging down. Uh, turn it around, make sure the chain is free and not uh, stuck into anything. And uh, then we'll continue on to the next step. Okay, there's my chain. Uh, it's free of the collar, it's uh, free of move, free moving. So now I can just move up and down, close. This is nice and tight now, so we'll go on to the next step. We okay, we verified everything with the uh, um, this collar and this uh, uh, actually assembly. Uh, then the next thing we need to do is you need to put the uh, actual rubber grommet, uh, new rubber grommet on that. And that's real simple, just basically it's a friction fit. Push it down until it's snug on the base, like that. And that'll seal that from leaking. Just like that. Okay, next thing you need to do is, is set the critical fill line, which is right there. It actually says CL on it. I don't know if we can bring that close enough for you to see it, but it says CL on it right there for critical fill. And uh, critical fill line. And uh, Basically, it should be this line here, on this collar here, should be about, and it should be an inch above the overflow pipe. Okay, and this is the overflow pipe here. So uh, you can adjust the length of this by uh, actually turning it. Uh, so grab it by the top, and then just turn it clockwise, counterclockwise. And as you turn clockwise and counterclockwise, it'll click, and it will move either. Uh, it'll become longer if you go counterclockwise, and shorter if you go clockwise. So adjust it to the right length making sure that this is sitting an inch above that overflow pipe when it's sitting inside the tank and it's flush with the bottom of the uh, uh, fill tank. Okay, so next uh, I'm going to thread this in here. They give you a couple of uh, uh, pieces to do that. There's a locking collar and a uh, seal. And uh, 
basically it all goes the seal goes inside the tank lock and collar goes on the outside okay so I'll show you that uh, before I put it in all right there's the proper orientation on that washer so you want the this protrusion or beveled edge here to be towards the bottom of the tank and the flat side to be on the flat mating surface on the top of this okay and the best way to put that in is to just push it down it's made out of rubber uh, if you want you can thread it but uh, just push it down and get it in there okay so there's that rubber collar all the way to the mating surface um, next uh, you'll have the ring or the locking collar here and it just twists on there by hand just like you saw us take, take off the other one this one should be pretty easy and uh, I'm going to put this on now before I actually install the tank because it's easier. So there's what it looks like on the outside. I'm going to show you the inside next. And I got that on pretty tight, hand tight. That's all you need. You know, they're plastic uh, parts. You don't have to go crazy on them. Okay, here's the bolt that you're going to use to secure the tank to the toilet seat or base um, as you can see uh, we're going to start with the bolt a rubber washer um, or grommet or whatever you want to call it it's a seal it goes inside the tank like so and uh, that's all you will see and then this goes through the uh, tank to the bottom base uh, here and attaches with this uh, bolt uh, now watch out because there's two different size bolts uh, on this kit there's a, there's a skinny one and there's a thick one. And the thick one is the one you want to use, okay? This is an optional one for a different type of uh, uh, arrangement. So you can read the instructions and see where that will be used, but we're not using that today. We're going back to the, what was there originally. So, bolt, rubber washer, two metal washers, and nut, okay? And make sure you use the right size nut. Okay, so actually, Prior to putting the toilet tank back on, you should probably clean around the base first too. Okay, so the mating surfaces are now nice and clean. We'll put the tank back on. Now, as you can see, that's sort of just balancing there, and it could, you know, it could easily fall off and break. So make sure you keep your hand on it while you're putting the, screw, the bolts and screws in next. Okay, there's the inner orientation I have inside the tank. Uh, you can see that the fill nipple is right there, facing towards the actual overflow pipe. Uh, there's a little nipple right here, and it, it's gonna have a tube, and it's gonna go over to this. Uh, it's not in the way of the actual screws at the bottom, so you can still tighten those up. And that's the next thing we're gonna do, is tighten, it, tighten up all the securing screws inside the tank, right at the bottom there. Okay, so I've lifted the bowl up and it's now loosely on top here. Don't let go of it because it won't sit right. Um, I can see through both holes pretty well, uh, though I probably can't get that with a camera. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit, show you what that looks like. See, they're, they're not exactly perfect, but they don't have to be. They just have to be, they're pretty wide holes. They just have to be wide enough for one of these to drop in there. So I'm going to drop one of these in there. I suggest you put all this gear and nuts and bolts and stuff in your pockets much easier to work that way. Uh, so there's one screw on the through the top. Here's another one through the top. And it should just drop right through to the through the full length by uh, gravity alone. Um, now don't trust this bowl until you've got the, a, a nut and and the washers on the bottom. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to put in the nut and, and sorry, sort to focus there. The nut and the two washers into the into the bottom of those uh, screws or bolts and uh, I'll show you that next okay I have that bowl situated as level and as correctly as I can sitting on the seal and as you can see this is the right side of the bowl and I'm going to put the nut and and the washers in there so here we go of course the washers first Remember, there's currently nothing holding that tank to the, the bowl, so you don't want that tank to fall, so be careful. Okay, once you've got it threaded in, you can stick your hand inside the bowl. 
and just loosely tighten it to that point. Okay, now you want to do the same thing on the other side. Now the bowl can't actually fall off. It's secured by that bolt there. This bolt over here is securing the to toilet seat right there. Sorry. <laughs> Hard to see there. Okay, so we're going to the other side now. All right, this would be the left side of the bowl. And again, you can see that fresh new bolt right there. I feel for it, there it is. And I'm gonna put my washers, that's two, and my bolt on. So that's almost a little snug on that side. I'm gonna make sure we're a little snug on the other side. And nice thing about it is once you get it snug enough, it looks like it basically sits down on the porcelain anyway. So I'm just gonna tighten it both down. So there we go. Hand tighten it as much as I can. Okay, it's hand tight. Next I'm gonna use the screwdriver to screw it down. Uh, being careful, remember, this is not metal, this is porcelain, so do not go too tight. Snug is good. Uh, try and remember what it felt like when you took it off and uh, replicate that that uh, uh, torque. Okay, just gonna tighten those screws down with my standard uh, screwdriver. You can use your uh, wrench on this and uh, to hold the nuts on the bottom. Uh, they're half inch and they're probably gonna turn when you try and turn those um, bolts like I am right now. So I'll just, there we go. That's fairly snug. It doesn't need to be any more snug than that. I can see it's squishing the uh, rubber quite tightly at this point. Even the other side right at this point is probably tight enough. I'm just going to give it a couple extra turns. Hope for the best. I don't want to do this again. Also, I don't want to break it. Okay, so. There you go, that's tight enough. That's not going anywhere. So, uh, almost done on the inside of the tank. Next, we need to attach this hose to this clip here. So, just push it on, it's a friction fit, like that. And this other end of the hose needs to go onto this little nipple right here which I showed you earlier. And it's just push it on so it can't be pushed any further. Then put the clip on. This is a little clip as you can see. And the hose is, is actually up putting from here. Put it right on the overflow pipe like that. And if you got too much, don't worry about it. Just let it be. You can cut it if you wish, but it doesn't interfere with anything anyway. Um, so there we go. Uh, it's in the overflow pipe and go into the nipple on the uh, fill valve. Okay, last thing we need to, well, one of the few to the last things we need to do is to actually hook the water um, uh, pipe to it and uh, the water feed pipe underneath the bowl. So we'll do that next. Okay, there we have my feed line right here. And uh, you know, check over your, ho your hose, your feed line, make sure that it's, it's good, that there's no cracks in it, that you get no water coming out of it. You know, basically look at, make sure that it's uh, serviceable. If it's not, then don't put it back on. Just go buy another one and replace it. You know, you get them at Walmart. So I'm just gonna tighten this up, right like this. And again, this is another one of those hand tights, just like the original. That's why they put these little tabs on them. This hand tight's good enough. Remember, they're made out of plastic. Okay. Okay. Now, 
Uh, next thing is turn the water on. We'll show you. I'll show you what that looks like uh, from the top. Uh, just turn. We have to turn that uh, line or valve counterclockwise. And it feeds the tank. If you don't have that, you have to turn on your water. Okay. I uh, almost forgot before I turn on the water. Uh, we need to put the handle back on. Uh, you could use the original. I'm sure it'd be fine. Uh, but I got a brand new shiny one here, so I'm going to use it instead. Uh, well, once again, uh, this is actually threads the exact opposite way that you would think. So counterclockwise tightens it, and clockwise loosens loosens it. So it's the exact opposite of what you're normally used to. So we take the nut off the end. Uh, we feed it the arm through that and it's got a square bit so it fits right into the square porcelain hole. Take the nut, bring it all the way to the top, screw counterclockwise, counterintuitively, and tighten it down. Now mine is my original handle is about the same length and I noted when I took it off that it, the actual chain was at the end of the handle so I'm going to put it in the same position. Okay, we got the lever and the, uh, the flushing uh, arm installed. Now we got to hook up the chain. Now, my, mine had a little hook on it, and that little hook was attached to the flapper uh, valve. Let's see if I can get you a better look at this. It's, there's the hook. Sorry guys. And basically carefully remove it from the flapper valve. The flapper valve is made out of uh, plastic and rubber, so uh, try not to hurt that. And what you need to do is attach this to the arm uh, and so that it lifts the flapper valve, okay? Now, uh, unfortunately I got way too much chain here. This is for a much larger uh, tank. But what you do is you need to just remove uh, the, the hook from the chain and move it lower. Okay, so I'll do that. Okay, there we go. And I don't know. Let's basically measure it out. Mine was at the end of the, the uh, uh, arm, so and you don't want the arm, basically you want the arm to be stopped by the chain at the basic top level of this of the tank. That's what I go for. Um, so there's where that would be on this chain, right there. So I'll put this hook back on here at that level. And then there's a little slot in the arm itself at the very end, little hole. And the hole, put it on there and test it out. Well, I'm a little high there still. I'm gonna get you a better angle on this. Let's see what's happening. See, I'm too high. The top of the tank's here, right? So uh, I gotta reduce this length of that chain even more. So I'll do that. Let me take that out again. even with the top of the tank and the flap is all the way up okay so we're ready now to fill this thing up so let's fill it up and see how it works opening the valve and ta-da now I'd say that's near perfect and I'll tell you why if you look down here at the overflow tube, it's not going to focus on that. Um, it's basically almost over the top of that. So I would say that I need to adjust that uh, 
down a little bit. So I believe there's a, yeah, there's a screw on here and you can tell it which way to go, up or down. And there is a positive and a negative on the side of it. Okay, so I'm gonna go, okay. I wanna go negative, so negative. I'm gonna go about half a turn, maybe a full turn there. Now, if you notice, the flapper valve is also adjustable. Uh, so you can, by turning it, you can adjust how long it's gonna stay, uh, you know, open. But that's up to you if you wanna play with that. I'm just leaving it set where it can. I'd say that was about perfect, but I'm, I'm hearing leaking, and I think that's the flapper valve, yes. So the chain, the excess chain on my flapper valve, right here, this is great. The excess chain on my flapper valve that I use to adjust, you know, the height of the handle, uh, is now causing it to, uh, basically it's getting stuck in the flapper valve and causing it to leak. So what we're going to do, I'm going to do next is just cut the chain and then test the system again. Okay, so I'm going to use a pair of wire cutters. I'm just going to cut the excess chain off. Make sure you cut the right side. <laughs> and just leave, I'm going to just leave a little bit just in case I ever need to adjust it again. That's pretty tough there. I'm going to cut through it. There we go. Okay, so now I'm about a quarter inch off the top of the overflow pipe, which is great. Gives me lots of water in the tank. Uh, it's nice to see that you can adjust this just by turning this knob. So negative counterclockwise uh, reduces the level, positive clockwise increases the level. So it's up to you where you set that to. I'm going to flush this one more time. Checking that chain to make sure that there's no possible way it can get between the seal and the flapper, and there's no way. No. You can't make it happen. And that's perfect. Okay, there it is, full again, and Functioning perfect. I got the water a quarter inch from the top of the overflow. Um, might actually even take it down a little further. And uh, not that it really matters. Uh, it seems to be working great right where it is. Um, now, last thing you need to do, well, second to last thing you need to do is put the cover back on. So we'll do that. Okay, my cover does have a front and a back to it. Uh, some don't. So the hooks go in the front. That keeps the cover from sliding off. Okay, we'll put the cover back on. Um, check the operation one more time. Make sure everything's cool. So. Sounds great. Now, I said second to the last thing. The last thing you need to do is clean up all the water and spillage around the uh, tank and make sure that you don't have any leaks. So places to look for leaks are in, are in the uh, two bolts underneath and in the uh, feed pipe uh, anywhere, anywhere on the feed pipe going into the uh, bottom of the tank. And once you check that all those places are leak free and the toilet stops filling when it's supposed to stop filling, you're uh, fixed. You're done. Okay. Thanks for watching. That's it for my video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this video and it helped you out in some way, do me a favor. Click on the like button right down here. And, uh, you know, if you wish to subscribe to my channel, just click on this link up here. And that should subscribe you to the, the uh, Richard Lloyd channel or Richard Lloyd USA channel. Um, okay. Again, Thank you very much for your time and watching.